Long before the sun and the moon would first rise into the skies above Middle-earth, elves, the first children of Iluvatar, would awake beneath the stars at Lake Kuivienen. There they would wander and discover more of their kind, creating language and song together. Melkor would be the first of the Velar to discover them, who would take them where he could and twist them into the creatures that would come to be known as Orcs. The second Velar to find the elves would be the Huntsman, Arome, being drawn to them by their distant singing and becoming amazed at what he found, naming them the Eldar, or People of the Stars. Arome would bring representatives of the elves to Velinor, where he would meet with the rest of the Velar, learning of Melkor's treachery and deciding to go to war against him. The rest of the elves would be invited to dwell in Amman alongside the Velar, keeping them safe from Melkor and the following war. While many would make the journey west, others would decide to stay in Middle-earth, forming their own cultures and society throughout history. Over the many years and ages of the world, the elves would use their gift of immortality, building impressive civilizations and becoming masters of their many crafts. They would be involved in many conflicts throughout history, not just against the forces of Melkor, or Morgoth as they would call him, but also against their own kind. Long after Morgoth's final fall and banishment into the void beyond the world, a new Dark Lord would eventually step up and take his place. The end of the Second Age, the new Dark Lord, Sauron, would amass his armies and fortify his realm of Mordor. The Elves, under their High King, Gil-galad, would form an allegiance with the men, dwarves and other free folk of Middle-earth and lay siege to Mordor against Sauron. This allegiance would be known as the Last Alliance and would be the last great conflict that the Elves of Middle-earth would take part in, save a few individuals such as the Sons of Elrond or Legolas, before they faded into the West, to the Undying Lands. Hello and welcome back to Mini-Earth, I'm Zach and today we'll be painting up some Elves of the Last Alliance. These particular models were first released in December 2001 as High Elf Warriors with Spears, sculpted by Gary Morley and available in blister packs of three metal miniatures. These are actually still available today from Games Workshop, though are now in packs of four containing all variant poses, but are unfortunately made from fine cast resin. So in addition to grabbing some new resin warriors, I also picked up a blister pack of the Elf Command which were metal models containing a banner bearer and a captain model, which will be painted alongside some of the older metal spearmen that were already in my collection. I've never had to deal with resin fine cars from Games Workshop before, and by Durin's beard these things truly are as horrible as people make them out to be. Air bubbles, bendy flexible spears, and just flimsy feeling overall. Anyway, sucking it up, I cleaned them in some warm soapy water to clean up any mold release residue, and then started cleaning up any flashing and mold lines. I then carefully filled in any air bubbles with some putty, using a toothpick to cram it into the holes. I also then tried fixing any spears by soaking them in boiling water. This worked on some of them, but there's still a bit of wonkiness here and there. Once they were ready for painting, I gave them a black undercoat and then an overspray with a light grey zenithal. Now before I get into the details of painting, I actually painted these models twice, at least where the gold armour is concerned, as I just wasn't happy with how it turned out the first go around. I originally went with a bright gold and a green wash, and I just wasn't sold on it. The elf armour in the films has a green tint, and trying to replicate it in miniature was harder than I initially thought. So you might see a bit of continuity here and there where certain details are painted both before and after the armour repaint. I also didn't like how the cloak turned out using metallics, so... I repainted that as well. So before getting into the process of the gold bits, I used night blue from Viejo to paint the robes and the lining of the cloak, making sure to also get the lining of the hood as well. These all took a couple of coats to get a solid base. While the blue was drying, I then started to experiment with the green gold armor. The armor of the original movie suits has a green tint, but it doesn't look solid all over and is stronger in certain areas. I actually picked up a set of the Army Painter Metallic Speed Paints, attracted to a couple of the new colours in this set, 
Specifically, I wanted to test out Aztec Gold and Hoplite Gold. Aztec Gold is a very green gold metallic, but lacks the rich, deeper gold that you see in the other areas of the armor. So after testing it on a shield, I then experimented with using a base color of flat green from Viejo, and then once dry, went over it with Hoplite Gold. This seemed to give the best results for what I was after, giving a richer gold, but showing a slight green hue in the areas where the speed paints dried thinner. This is the green with hoplite gold on the left and a solid coat of Aztec gold on the right. So with my decision made up, I then went on to painting all of the elves armor in the green before applying the gold speed paint over the top. To add a little more depth to the plates, I carefully applied a thin layer of Agrax Earthshade where the armor plates or strips overlaid each other, just doing fine lines in between each layer. Now going back to the robes, I mixed Night Blue with Festa Blue from Coat de Arms to start working up the highlights, using thin glazes and slowly adding more Festa Blue into the mix as the layers got lighter. I then finished off my highlights for the robes using heavy blue from Viejo. Moving on to the cloak, I painted the base layer with Viejo Nocturna Shadow, making sure not to paint over the areas that represented the blue lining. And I also painted the sash the same way. I then started to mix in stone grey, just a tiny bit to start and then began wet blending up the highlights of the folds of the material, adding more and more grey with each layer. Once I reached a fine layer of pure stone grey, I then got some sky grey and did the final highlights. These cloaks were also a second attempt like the armor, where I originally built up highlights using a metallic silver, as the fabric in the movies is quite a shiny metallic silver from a darkish green but I don't like how it looked on the model, so I decided to replicate it in non-metallic. While not perfect, I think it turned out much better. I used Rhinoxide for any wooden areas, like the handles on the backs of the shields and the shafts of the spears. I then mixed in a little pale sand to build up highlights. Chestnut brown was used for the leather areas, like the gloves, boots, and shoulder ties on the cloak. I also used this for the little leather tabs on the armor of the captain and the banner bearer. Once dry, I then washed them in Agrax Earthshade to deepen the details before highlighting using Earth from Viejo Game Color. Natural flesh was used on what little skin was visible on the face. I then gave it a sepia wash, then highlighted back up with natural flesh and then elfic flesh. Then where I could actually make out eyes, I carefully dotted in the white, then used the fine marker trick to dot the pupils. I cracked out another speed paint from the army painter metallic set, this time polished silver, and used it on the blades of the spears and the captain's sword. I also used it on the areas of chainmail. Once dried, I took out some numb oil and gave the blades a wash, letting it pull around the raised details. I then took a blue wash and applied it to the chainmail. I then highlighted up the steel areas with Viejo Chrome, and then I took some Retributor armor from Citadel and carefully painted the gold raised details at the base of the blades. I also wanted the armor to pop a little more, so I did an edge highlight of glorious gold. Now for the part I was dreading the most, freehanding the detail on the banner. Going off the Games Workshop version, I went with a black base coat, leaving the top and bottom edges unpainted. I then took white and cleaned up the ends in preparation for the yellow trim, which I did in Sun Yellow from Viejo. Now for my first freehand job. That sounds... Anyway. I took some sky grey and started to paint the viney lines. 
The original design had two thin parallel lines for each side, but to save my sanity, I decided to go with just one each. I went over the lines a few times, constantly reapplying black in areas, then redoing the grey lines again until I was happy with them. I then did my best to paint a circle that looked circular near the base of the banner, and then I did the square and the little floral dotty details. Then some more trial and error to get it decent before doing the final green vines. I then mix some sun yellow with a little pale sand to highlight the top trim. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Now since these are the elves of the last alliance that would be fighting in Mordor, I glued on some city rubble base ready from Geek Gaming Scenics. I then carefully glued on all the shields using some super glue. And then added some burnt and dry grass tufts from Gamers Grass to give it that desolate look. Also, as these elves have been laying siege to Sauron's domain for several years by this point, they needed to be dirtied up a little. Another detail you can see in the film costumes. So I took some natural umber pigment from Viejo and dusted up the bases of the cloaks and the robes. And now finally, I think I can call these done, so let's show this lot off. Well, what a journey. These turned out to be more of a challenge than I originally thought, though it's probably my own fault for being so obsessed with replicating the movie costume look. A common problem on this channel. While I won't say I'm 100% happy with the end result, I definitely learned a lot and got them to a point where they look decent enough, especially as a collective group. Anyway, that's my first video of the year done, and I'm so excited to work on a lot more projects for 2024. I'll be back real soon with something else, but for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all at the next one.